All right, welcome back. Like I said, the other video will be taking out the 262. Now, I'm going to say this before this starts. I'm going to run through two matches. May not get a single kill because it has been literally like two and a half, three years, maybe, since I've played this. Maybe two odd years. Uh, let's see here. They've added in new stuff to it, so it's been quite a while. But I want to say something else. Back when we were grinding modifications for this, I didn't run a premium account, and even with it, it wouldn't make much of a difference. But you might spend a week just trying to grind out one of these modifications. And Gaijin made a ton of money back then for using GEs on stuff. Because the RP needed and RP you were getting per match was insanely low. Like, I know last year people were, like, going to riot over the RP gain and loss, which was terrible, but you guys would have lost your mind. So it sits at 7 points, uh, or 7.0. There's three of them as far as this model. You've got the 262C and CB, and these have boosters on them, if I remember correctly. I don't think this one gets the boosters whatsoever. But the Narwhal, I use that in ground pounding, and I love it. And I grinded that thing out in air for all its modifications. And it only had, uh, it's 32 rounds, and every third shot, until you unlock the ammo belt, like I said, it took a long time. The first two shots are practice rounds that dealt zero damage. If you don't believe me, go look it up. We had practice ammo, so every third shot was the only thing that would deal damage. And they may or not do any damage, due to the way the cannons worked back then. So, let's hop right into it. I've got to change up the ammo belt. I don't know if they've swapped over. No, we got Knight. Knight has a mine shell round on it, and it explodes like a little AoE. That would deal damage. Back in the day, Mind Shell didn't have the AoE. It just said, hey, if you hit something, that something is destroyed. Whether it be a flap, wing, fuel silage, pilot. <laughs> so, we have the night round. And if you see below HE-T, if I understand it's pronounced Mind Shell, I might be wrong there. So some of my uh, European friends can tell me. We're going to run with minimum loads, 15 minutes. This thing does not turn well, but it does retain energy. And it usually didn't rip its wings. Okay, we do not have the boosters on this one. It's going to be slow. Oh, I wonder if he's starting. They're starting their journeys on the 262s. And look at the Swedish stuff just blowing through there. And I think those are 7.0. They might be a little bit higher. That's the premium, the SK-60, isn't it? I can't remember. Look at our IL-28s so like our last video. And they're German ones. So Here's a fun fact. So they had Axis vs. Allies back in the day. Germany was one of the first ones to get jets. And I think right after they gave the British, maybe something American, and... Hmm, interesting. But yeah, you had a very limited team selection. And to say when the other side had better jets in every possible way was not an understatement. You had to want it. You had to grind for hours to get these modifications. You know, sometimes it'd be three or four days with a grinding, 30 games a day. And y'all think I'm joking, that it was that bad. And I wasn't running premium back then, because I was just a collector of the World War II vehicles. Some premium would come out, I'd pick it up, and to me that was fine, as long as I had Silver Lions to play, which is a whole other issue when we get to repairs, because the CL-13, when I finally unlocked it, was almost impossible to play continuously due to, you know, SL cost. It might cost you 60000 a game to bring it out. That's one reason it killed off bombers for quite a while, because they were 30,000 plus to play. If you won and did not die. <laughs> so I keep reminiscing about the old days. Now, we're slow. Yeah. We can climb decently. Their claim to fame was you could get up to speed, because back then you were still fighting props. Like, what would be considered 4.0 props at this point. So the BR was a little messed up. But you go good and fast. You go decently fast in a straight line, and you could make a single, you know, vertical loop over. And that's, you retain your energy, and boom and zoom was the name of the game, and you were taught that as a German player from your very first vehicle, besides the biplanes, all the way down the line. Oof, F-84s. Not what we want to see. But you see how I'm doing this rolling? I'm just lightly touching the key. This is so much more responsive. Back in the day, it was like taking an hour's worth of fuel. That's, that's truly how bad it was. Yeah. And this actually does turn a lot better. You still get combat flaps. Your cannons are actually really good. 
and they're nose mounted, so they were generally easy to get on target. Now trying to fight like an F8F F Bearcat back then, yeah, it was just not fun. Ooh, SU-11. So the SU-11 was supposed to be a 262, and that was it. But they basically removed all the bad things about the 262 and made it something it wasn't. I got it when it came out, and I played it for maybe 30 games and put it down. Because it goes faster, it turns better, and it's, it's very maneuverable. And extremely fast, whereas I'm hitting 500, that thing's probably hitting 700. I think it crashed. So, I haven't played this thing in years, literally. I'm topping out, yeah, about 600, that's gonna be my speed. This F-84, I may be able to get guns on him. I'm probably gonna lose a lot of speed doing this. You really shouldn't do this bit, what I'm about to do, so... I'm gonna go up, and I'm just gonna fire off some rounds, and hope something hits. Did not hit. Combat flaps. There's a meteor. And that was one of the earlier British jets. And meteors were a million times better than the 262 because they could turn. And I mean turn, like, it didn't take them 45 seconds. What is this F-84 doing? Well, he's going to be much faster than me. We're not going to go play with that. Do need to keep an eye on him because he's going to circle back. I think the F-84s tend to lock up. Okay, he's going for the low-hanging fruit there. And even though my engines are kind of overheating, if you don't have the modifications, they will overheat. Mm. You just got to kind of be fluid with your targets. Oh, I thought that was going to hit. That would have been perfect. The velocity really isn't bad on the rounds, but the rate of fire is. So it's four rounds every shot. We got 240 left. F3D. It's coming back towards me, and we're retaining a lot of energy. He's probably going to kill me here in the turn. Whew. So we can do something he can't. Retain energies in these kind of long loops. There's my buddy 262. You did learn a lot of teamwork back in the day. We're going to force him to turn just a little bit. Wow, the nose really gets back up on this thing now. There was no way possible back in the day for that to happen. We may get a kill here. Uh, he's just a little bit more maneuverable than we are. And he's going to abuse it. We're going to drop our throttle a little bit because our engines are starting to uh, kind of feel the heat, so to speak. Good shot, 262. Good job, buddy. And this is very different from what I used to play. That's the Vampire. That is 8.0? Yeah, the Vampire is up there. Nice kill. That dude is a professional 262 player. But this is... It was some of the most fun I had in War Thunder at the time because they were, you know, new. They weren't the greatest. They were definitely outclassed by a lot of props. But it was neat. We had Jets and War Thunder, you know? And this was something that was kind of iconic. Even though it was just a total flying boat, like, this is a million times better than what we had. I know I keep saying that, but it truly is. Let's see here. I think that F-80 is actually going down. No. Yeah, he is going down. Okay. Oh, he got me. We got an engine. There's an SU-11 doing something it's not supposed to do, is turning hard. And they got my wing. So we'll take it out for another game. Like I said, it's been years since I played this thing. But it feels much better than it did. So we had Axis versus Allies. You might have two to three 262s on your team. You'd have the D-13, which I think was around at that time. Tons of those, because for some reason they were right up next to it in BR. Let's see, what other props as far as our team? Just a bunch of 109s and this thing. And I think the TA, was it the 151? And the occasional Arado bomber. 
but they didn't have enough bomb loadout to take out bases in one go, which I'm glad they finally fixed that or you know made it to where they could. Those were always fun to see. Because back then, when you dedicated yourself to a line, you dedicated yourself to a specific portion, like, like hey, I'm going all bombers or all fighters, etc. So I'm going to get that skin for it. Like, I've I seen that skin. I've got to have it. Like, the rule of cool beats all. Hey, zero. Spitfires. Those guys either got up-tiered or I got down-tiered. And why is he in the air? I thought I clicked, uh, don't join... Oh, it's the ground attackers. Yeah. Jabos and U4. The U4 is the, uh... I think that's the Narwhal. Jabo is the one I haven't unlocked yet. <laughs> Somebody's mad they're not getting a 288C mat. Uh, match. Uh. Uh. Why is an IL-2... Oh, that's an IL-2 ground pounder. Okay. It's gonna have an IL-28. Just seen the first numbers, like, what? Hornets are nasty. Twin engine prop planes, they're very nasty. So we've got a grand total of, what, three jets in here so far? Mm-hmm. Now there's TA-152. That's what I meant to say. You do sit at 7.0, so you can see down to 6.0. Or the, uh, unfortunate 5.7s that get boosted up to, you know, 6.7, that's these things. But you notice our top speed was maybe around 600. There are props that go faster than us. But it's just... It feels good to me. feels good. Brings back a lot of memories. Now, granted, this was a time when I played this game to win, I guess is a way to put it. And I was very competitive. Like, I had to win. You know, you get physically ill sometimes when you're losing matches. Not necessarily, but that's how much I put into it. And that's why I want to talk to people today. It's like... I still get aggravated. Like, I was playing with my buddy Don't Mate last night, and we were playing top-tier tanks, and I was, like, super aggravated, because I was dying, and this guy that was supposedly saying he was lagging ended up getting a nuke in a match, and I had shot him three separate vehicles in places that should have pinned him in his challenger two, and uh, did not. Like, I got one bounce and two just hits and no pins, and you're shooting a 480 round uh, worth of pin sad wheel at him. Sabop, Sabo around, whatever, blah, blah, I'm tongue tied and not doing anything. Yeah. Uh, wow, we've got. S I'm going for it. Like, if I can get on that AH1, I'm taking him down. If he can learn the guns, which I have to relearn this whole flight model with how, for lack of better words, agile it is now. Yeah, I have to relearn it. It used to be you go straight decently fast. And uh, just try to pick on a bomber or somebody going slow. Well, maybe one more game. <laughs> maybe one more game. Alright. That was me just being dumb. I should have not taken the head on. But hey, we got to kill. Sometimes what you got to do. One last one. I'm sorry for making this a longer video. Just talking about the history of this thing that I had. You know, what did, did I get a ground force rescuer? really yeah so and I remember it was a little after that when they introduced the narwhal and finding out that only every third shot did damage was it hurt but there was a lot of b-17s around back then and this thing was right in its br so what you do is upon takeoff fire two rounds get up behind a bomber and hope that when you would hit and two after you hit it would destroy something but not just sparkle but yeah and i'm really having fun going back through the, the tech tree stuff and kind of showing off you know just what i played with and what i really enjoyed uh, i tried taking out the is it the k4 yeah definitely power crept uh i've been playing with the trop a little bit having fun with that i had to take out my old d9 been taking out the d13 you know take out my one ta one blah 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 152? Where is she at? She's around here somewhere. Where is... 7.0? Somewhere in here. There we go. I'm blind. Yeah. The H1. That's an amazing energy retainer, and I've actually done very well in it. It's just fun. 
like I said, no, yeah, they were horrible to use back in the day. Quick of times. You know what? What I'm actually going to do, I'll call the video here because I want to go swap out for the CL-13. You see me play horribly in two matches, and we'll pull out this old thing. This was the first saber of its kind out there and beyond broken. It still has all my old stickers on it. So we'll take that out. It's moved up to 9.0, and I think they gave it missiles, didn't they? Uh, nope. And you can see this stuff was not here when I played it last. So what's in our modifications? Yep, bomb stuff. But come back to it, and we'll just go from there. So sorry for the two horrible games, but it's more me talking about playing it from the past. So if you're unlocking the 262s, they're much better than they used to be. Just make them work. You know, I'll have to get more in-depth with them and go back and play about 20 games in it. And then come back and say, hey, this may be the way you need to use it. Thing I know it's still retaining energy. So on those turns, I was still cooking about 480, 450. So just kind of use your energy to your advantage. And I'll catch you next time. Later.